Hi friends, let's read a new book today called Harlem at Four by Dr. Michael Datcher, illustrated by Frank Morrison. And you are in for a treat because these illustrations are gorgeous. They are so pretty, so stick around. Pause to read what it's about. And pause for the author's note about his daughter, Harlem. Part one, Harlem at four, you blink awake and your eyelashes brush. A super daddy S across my beating chest, sketch black girl magic on my heart shaped canvas. Cameras can't capture your Malcolm X Boulevard corner speaker confidence. Fierce can't be photographed. Shutter speed too slow to frame you. Like the government sought to cage Black Panther Avini Shakur, the jury said not guilty before she gave birth to Tupac Shakur in Harlem. Listening to Johnny Coltrane songs make you sing a love supreme. Cloudy days make you kind of blue like your favorite Miles Davis record. We bond on black genius. You take the A train transformed into my ride share museum shoulders. Rolling artsy from Romir Bearden to John Michel Basquiat. Playdates with painters before you take the A train home. Covered in watercolors, you awaken at dawn, praying to the sun with reggae songs on your lips, singing One Love and Bob Marley's Three Little Birds who remind you every little thing is going to be all right. Your pink pajamas match your pink protective goggles during Harlem and Daddy's early morning science club. The volcano erupts red lava on Valentine's Day. You celebrate science experiment success by playing your pink guitar Daddy keeps rhythm with a soul clap in the background while looking lovingly. At a black girl named Harlem with magical eyelashes, painting a super daddy S across my beating chest. Part two, in Harlem, New York's fourth year of the 20th century, the father of Harlem, Philip A. Payton Jr., became the proud parent of the Afro-American Realty Company. Papa Payton bought homes in Harlem, the birthplace of author James Baldwin, then rented them to brownstone colored families because unfair white landlords blocked black moms and dads from white blocks brownstones. That's not justice. Papa Payton bought two beautiful buildings near the corner of 135th Street and Lenox Avenue so that beautiful black parents who had moved from the south could raise their beautiful black babies in the north. As loving pioneers of the great migration, black is beautiful. In Harlem, New York's fourth year of the 20th century, New York's first subway line opened on Lenox Avenue and made a stop on the corner of 135th Street and Lenox Avenue so relatives could visit Baby Black Roses 
growing up through concrete in Papa Peyton's buildings. Years later, Harlem readers decided to rename Lenox Avenue Malcolm X Boulevard because he was a black rose who preached justice on a concrete corner on 135th and Lenox to listening crowds, which included a young social justice advocate and a street corner poet named Sonia Sanchez. Malcolm X inspired Harlemites to stand up for their rights, magical words that painted black pride across their beating chest. And that's the end, friends. Pause to read about the incredible people, places, and things in Harlem at four. I told you the illustrations were beautiful. And here's the author with his daughter Harlem and the illustrator. Until next time, friends, give me a like and follow so you don't miss the next story.